Okay, so this is section 4.4, which is graphs of sine and cosine. Um, I would first suggest, if you haven't already, watch my video connecting the unit circle to sine and cosine graphs. So watch that video first, and then this second. Um, what we're going to talk about is the basic waves revisited, sin sinusoids and transformations, and modeling periodic behavior. Okay, so a sinusoid is a function, a function is a sinusoid if it can be written in the form f of x equals a times sine of bx plus c plus d, where a, b, c, and d are constants and neither a nor b is equal to zero. So the amplitude, the amplitude is going to be the absolute value of a um, for both sine and cosine functions. So graphically, the amplitude is half the height of the wave. So if we have, let's take our sine graph here, okay, you're going to find the amplitude by basically, you find that, that horizontal line that it's oscillating around, and it's going to be, you could say that is the amplitude, you could also say that is the amplitude. Or you could take the whole height from the top to the bottom, and that would be two of the amplitude. So whatever that is cut in half, that would be the amplitude of your function. The period is going to be two pi divided by the absolute value of b for both sine and cosine. So graphically, the period is the length of one full cycle of the wave. So again, if we have a wave function here, it's going to keep going forever. Um, the period would be the time it takes to go from the starting point back to that original point. Okay, so this would be one full cycle of sine. But this one is sine, but one full cycle of our graph. And you notice it starts and ends in the same spot. And then, um, so the time it takes or the number of the angles it takes to get from the starting point to the ending point here, that is the period of, of our function, either our sine function or our cosine function. Okay, so an example it says a horizontal stretch or shrink in period. So find the period of y equals sine of x over 2 and use the language of transformations to describe how the graph relates to sine of x. Okay, so what it might help to do on this one is instead of writing this as x over 2, I'm going to rewrite this as sine of 1 half x. So we know those are equivalent, but then that totally shows us what our b value is. And so to find the period, we say period is equal to 2 pi over the absolute value of b. Well, on this one, we know that our b value now in our rewriting is 1 half. So that would be 2 pi divided by 1 half. Now be careful here because sometimes we see 2 and a half and we think, oh, that's just going to be 1. But that's not the case. 2 divided by a half, you think of how many halves go into 2, that would be 4. So this would turn out to be 4 pi. So what that means in terms of our graph, so I'm going to sketch it here. So let's just say that this is pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. This is 1 and negative 1. So we didn't have an amplitude change. Notice there's no a value out front, which means if you don't have a number out front, your amplitude is just going to be 1. So my sine function, my normal sine function, starts at 0, goes up to 1, back down, and it completes that whole cycle in 2 pi. So we would go here, we're going to end at 2 pi, it's going to go up, oops, messed that one up. <laughs> okay, it's going to go up, down, and back up. So that's, um, that is our standard parent function of just plain sine of x. But what, with, what we found here is that we changed the period to 4 pi. So what that means is my new graph is going to start at 0, 0, but it's going to end at 4 pi. So that means it's going to go up, down, and back up. 
So to describe that transformation, so it's saying, is it a horizontal stretch or is it a horizontal shrink? We would say this one is a horizontal stretch. And it's a stretch. It went from a period of 2 pi to a period of 4 pi. So we could say a stretch by a factor of 2. Okay? So you're going to have less, um, less cycles in that same time period, basically. Okay? So it's kind of stretching it out horizontally. Okay. Our next example says the frequency... Um, is going to be b over 2 pi, so for both sine and cosine. Graphically, the frequency is the number of complete cycles of waves a wave completes in the unit interval. So if we're thinking of um, what we just talked about with the period, frequency is the reciprocal of the period. So when we're finding something, like if we have, if we end up with something of a frequency of 3 over 2 pi, what that means is that our graph would complete three full cycles in an interval of 2 pi. So typically our unit interval that we're talking about is 2 pi because 2 pi is all the way around the unit circle. It's kind of our standard um, period, standard um, for our graphs that we're looking at for sine and cosine. Okay, so we're going to combine a phase shift with a period change. So it says to construct a sinusoid with a period of pi over 3 that goes through the point 2, 0. Okay, so in order to go backwards, so this one we're given the period, but we need to write the function. So what I'm going to do is I know that period is equal to 2 pi over my absolute value of b. So then I'm going to rewrite this as we know the period in this. So we know that pi over 3 is equal to 2 pi over the absolute value of b. So now we could cross multiply here. So we could say 2 pi times 3, that gives me 6 pi. And this would be absolute value of b times pi. So we have a pi on both sides. So we know that absolute value of b is going to be equal to 6. So that means that b could be plus or minus 6. So it's just asking us to construct a function. So it doesn't say um, it has to be one specific type of function. So I'm going to just pick positive 6 on this one. OK, so we know our b value. We know b is equal to 6. OK, and then we have this information that it goes through the point 2, 0. So if you think about sine, if we come back to our parent function here, we know that sine goes through the point 0, 0. So if I want it to go through the point 2, 0, that means I need to shift it to the right, 2. So if we build this function here, we could say y equals, and then we could say sine, and then my b value, I'm going to say 6 times x minus 2, because we want to shift it to the right, 2. So then we can simplify this. So we could say sine of, we could distribute that and say 6x minus 12. So now here's what I would do. I would always double check this. So I'm going to shift over to Desmos here for a second and let's type that in. So y equals, where are my functions? Sine of 6x minus 12. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in here, and if we look, it goes through the point 2, 0. So you want to make sure, it's always helpful to switch over to Desmos, graph it, and make sure that it meets the constraints that you're given. Okay, back to our notes here. Okay, so we have all these different shifts so we looked at one in the previous problem where we had a b value that we could then distribute. So just like all the functions that you've done and that we've done so far this year and you did last year in Algebra 2, we have an a, we have an h, and we have a k. Different with the sine and cosine, we also have a b now, okay? So um, a, we talked about a is amplitude, so the absolute value of a. If you had a negative value, so like let's say you had negative 2 sine of x, 
So your amplitude is not ever going to be negative. It's always the absolute value. So we would say that the amplitude is 2. But that right there, just like always, tells us that we're going to reflect it. So this would look like we would have our sine graph. Instead of starting by going up, it would go down. So we would go down to 2, up to positive 2, and back. So that's the opposite of our typical um, sine function that starts by increasing. So this would be a reflection over the x-axis. This would be an amplitude of 2, which means our high point and low point is going to be 2. Okay, and we talked about the period, how to find the period, 2 pi over b. Be careful with those fractions if you have b as a fractional value. Um, and then the frequency is just the reciprocal of that. So that tells us how many cycles in one unit interval, which most case here is going to be 2 pi. And then we know that we have, if we have a phase shift of h, that's going to be our inside here, and it's opposite, just like every function that we've talked about. And then we have a vertical shift of k. So that k is going to tell us if we shift our graph up or down. Okay, so our last example here says combining a phase shift with a period change. So we're going to find the frequency of the function f of x equals negative one-third cosine of 5x and interpret its meaning graphically. Okay, so the frequency is going to be um, absolute value of b over 2 pi. So in this case, my b value is 5. So it would be 5 over 2 pi. So what that tells me is that in the interval of 2 pi, there's going to be 5 complete cycles. And that's my interval. So when we graph it, we can see that between 0 and 2 pi, we should see 5 complete cycles of my graph. Okay, we also know that the period is the reciprocal of that. So the period is 2 pi over 5. Okay, and then this right here, our amplitude is 1 third. So that means it's only, it's going to be kind of a, um, it's not going to go up high and low high. It's only going to go up to one third and down to negative one third. And this tells me that it's going to be flipped. So remember, cosine starts up at one, goes down, comes back up. So if we're doing a negative cosine graph, it's going to start low, go up to its high point and come back. So those are things to know based on our um, parent function. So again, that first video where we talked about how to connect the unit circle to our graph. Okay, so if I were to sketch this, I always look at the period to tell me um, kind of what I'm gonna go by interval or on my x-axis wise. So um, because the period is two pi over five, I am going to go by pi over five. So this would be pi over five, this would be two pi over five, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi over 5 is just pi, 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi, 9 pi, 10 pi over 5 would be 2 pi. So I kind of go like that. And then if this is 1 and this is negative 1, so we know, I'm going to split this into kind of thirds so we can see. So we know that our graph is only going to be going up and down by a third. That's going to be our high and low point. Okay. So I know it's going to start down at negative one-third. And the fact that the period is 2 pi over 5 means it's going to be back down at negative um, one-third at two, 2 pi over 5. And then halfway in between, it's going to be at its high point, which is positive one-third. So this would be 1. And then... Two, three, four, five. So you can see that we completed five cycles in that interval of two pi. Again, it's always a good idea to go to your graph and kind of check your work. So I understand how to do this by hand. But since we have the technology available to us, it's always a good idea to check. So we have one third, we go to functions, cosine of 5x. 
So we can see, you can click on, you're not going to necessarily um, get the fractional values, but you can see that it's nice and keeps it in pi over five and pi over 10. It's not putting it into decimal values for our X coordinates, which is nice and helpful to us. So we can see, we know that um, two pi is gonna be six point something, like 6.28. Um, so we can see right here, there's our two pi at negative a third. So we can count one, two, three, four, five, five cycles of our graph are completed in that two pi. Okay. So that is it for this lesson. Let me know if you have any questions.